It's the Irish and the Buckeyes from the shoe. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com. We're going to talk a little Notre Dame, Ohio State football. Big line in this opening game for both teams for 2022. Uh, before we get to that, though, a real quick note. Check out that banner at the top of your screen. It says get a free $60 account. There's a link below this video where if you click on that and you're not yet a member at DocSports.com, want to give it a trial run, you can set yourself up for a free $60 account. Then you can use those free 60 bucks on any of Doug Upstone's daily packages, any of my daily packages. It is as simple as that. It's a great way to give DocSports.com a trial run again if you're not yet a member. Uh, listen, Doug, we've got a line that says Ohio State's a 17, even a 17 and a half point favorite at home to Notre Dame. The total in the high 50s, around 59. Uh, you could have had this at 13 and a half if you're a Buckeye backer in this one. A while back, the tickets are split 50-50. Doug, I think that the line has moved in the right direction, even though those tickets are split down the middle. What are your thoughts? Do you think that the line has moved in the right direction, or do you think Notre Dame is being undersold, underrated a little bit? Yeah, I, I don't think that they're being undersold. I think the line has moved in the right direction and on, on the right team. I mean, Ohio State is one of the top two teams in the country. I think with them and Alabama, the separation be, between those two and everybody else is, is quite a bit. Now, Ryan Day has himself a fantastic offensive football team. They can, There's not much they can't do. Uh, you know, yes, they lost some talented wide receivers, but the replenishment system is just continual now at, at this university. The offensive line, I think, is going to be better, you know, than it was last year. The question, of course, is is defense, you know, with them. And, you know, they hired, you know, the right guy uh, in Jim Knowles to, to be able to go for it, or cer certainly seems to be. And he's already talking about they might be a top 20 defense by the end of the year. We'll see how that plays out. But, you know, I look at Notre Dame, you know, I mean, there's some obviously, you know, the line went that direction for a reason, Scott. And, you know, we both know that. And maybe not everybody watching this video does. But, you know, Notre Dame has brand new head coach and Marcus Freeman trying to make something happen here. And, you know, he wasn't great in the Fiesta Bowl when they lost to Oklahoma State. So from that standpoint, you, ha you have that. You're breaking a new quarterback. You're, you have weaknesses at wide receiver to begin with, and now they've lost a couple of guys that they were depending on to begin with. Their secondary is the weakness of the defense. I mean, the defense is good, no question about yeah. that, but the weakness is, the, is in the secondary. Cornerbacks, not a lot of speed. Uh, have to. I, I think they're going to play a lot of you know uh, coverage uh, in, in the secondary. Zone. Yes, because uh, there's just no way that they're going to be able to keep up speed wise. So from that standpoint, I think the line is correct. And, you know, and it's just a matter of can Ohio State exploit it, which many people, I think, believe they can. But Notre Dame is also getting the benefit of a doubt because they're Notre Dame. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, you, I want to hit on the secondary real quick, uh, because that is the weak link of the Notre Dame football team, whether it's offense or defense, that's the weak link. And, you know, I was looking at some of the players. I was looking at the recruiting profiles when they came to Notre Dame. And, I, and I, I'm not saying this sarcastically. I really do believe this, that this secondary, the guys that are going to be starting for the Irish to kick off this season, are recruits that would have normally landed about three hours away from South Bend in Bloomington and playing for the Indiana Hoosiers. This is not a typical secondary you would expect from a team that is getting a lot of mention for a top five uh finish in college football and I see you shaking your head I'm in agreement this is not a top five football team maybe we're all going to be fooled and all of a sudden we're going to be eating our words uh, come Saturday night but the bottom line is I, I just don't see that happening that the team's heavily overrated I agree with the line movement Tyler Buckner's the new quarterback uh, for Notre Dame he's behind a decent offensive line but you mentioned Jim Knowles the new DC for Ohio State Ryan Day went out and got like three or four new assistant coaches. And I like that because you know, a lot of coaches are sitting around and, and kind of wait for things to almost fall apart before they start making moves. He didn't, you know, oh my gosh, they didn't play in the playoffs last year. It's time to go find some assistant coaches <laughs> with a little more know-how. That's Ryan Day and that's the Buckeyes. That's how good this program has become, obviously, over the last several years. And so Jim Knowles comes up from Stillwater. He did a great job at, at Oklahoma State. I was doing shows uh, this this August or this past August, and I was talking about he, he performed some small miracles in Stillwater. I can only imagine what he could do with the kind of recruits the Ohio State Buckeyes get on the defensive side of the football. So when you put it all together, you add in C.J. Stroud, who I don't think we've mentioned yet, who could very well be holding that Heisman hardware come December. Good wide receivers, star wide receivers, even though they're young, they had to replace a couple. 
Very strong offensive line. Solid ground game. Better defense than last year. They can actually probably slow running games down this year. I think they win this game by 21 points, Doug. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I just... From that standpoint, I you know I cannot disagree with you, but I'm just gonna just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna make the case for Notre Dame. So what do they got to do? They have to run the ball. So if, if they run the ball, keep keep it on the keep Ohio State on the sidelines. I think that would be a big plus. They're not great at wide receiver, but they're awesome at tight end. Mike Myers probably one of the, if he's not the best tight end in the country, he's among them. So if they can get ten catches from their tight ends, okay, and of course they got to score touchdowns. That's the other big thing. I think the real key, though, to me in the game is the total. The total is, like you said, about 59. And if it goes over the total, I don't think there's any question that Ohio State wins the game. Okay, they're the they're the stronger offensive team. But if it goes under, that gives Notre Dame a fighting chance in the, in this case. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to go with I'm going to maybe I'm just being from the Midwest and you know growing up around all that with Notre Dame and all that stuff. That maybe I think they got a shot, okay, at least to cover the spread. I'll say 35-21 Ohio State. Total goes that total then goes under. But Scott, with you taking I with uh, with Ohio State, I could not disagree that that is a very likely outcome as well. Sounds good. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Sprite. So don't forget check out that free sixty dollar account. The link below the video if you want to give DocSports.com a trial run. You're not yet a member. He's Doug. I'm Scott. Let's put them in the wind column, everybody. We are DocSports.com.